Dr. Mindy here. I have a great topic for today's video. It's can fasting help a woman's fertility? Oh my gosh, I've been waiting to answer this one in a video. So thank you to all of you who have asked it. And if you are new to my channel, Welcome, I'm a woman on a mission. I am here to empower women to believe in their own healing power again. Men, I'm not leaving you out. I want you to believe in your own healing power as well. And I wanna get the whole world fasting. So hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and let's get on this journey together. Do a long fast one day, your blood sugar going up and down. We're in it together. Fast Like a Girl, it's ready for pre-order and I wanna do something really cool for you all. When you pre-order the book, I'm giving you 14 free days in my academy. Now let me tell you, my Reset Academy is my baby. This is where I am inspiring, teaching people about their health. We work out together, we fast together, we educate together. I got John D. Martini coming in, I had John Gray come in. We've got some incredible experts come to this community to lift everybody up. It is a supportive, amazing community with a ton of videos on how you can succeed with fasting, including a course I have in there on how you can start fasting like a girl now before the book even gets to your front door. Go ahead and pre-order it. And all you have to do is go to fastlikeagirl.com and in that link, you will find the steps to take your pre-order and put it into my team and they will send you free access to our Reset Academy for 14 days. As always, I hope that not only does my academy change your life, but the book, getting it in your hand I hope that changed the direction of your health. Okay, can fasting help with fertility? I'm gonna walk you through a thought process here again, so stay all the way through to the end because I want you to think this through for yourself. We live in a culture right now where you walk into your doctor's office and you ask a question, you dump some symptoms on your doctor and your doctor gives you the answer but doesn't teach you anything about your body. This is not what this YouTube channel is about. This isn't what all my social media uh, platforms, and not what all my books are about. My mission is to teach you to think these questions through and to get to know your body so you can answer them in an educated way for yourself. So let's start with this question. What do we know about a woman's cycle? What hormones are coming and what hormones are going that affect fertility? Because if you're trying to get pregnant, and you're on this video looking at fasting as a tool, I wanna make sure you understand your sex hormones and you understand the lifestyle that matches those. So here we go. Day one to day 10, estrogen is coming in. You've gotta have estrogen peak and hit a certain spot in order to be able to trigger the release of an egg. So there is a lot of behind the scenes neurochemical reactions that are happening to get estrogen to peak. I won't bore you with all those details, but what I want you to understand is starting on day one, estrogen and progesterone come crashing down, you start bleeding, and then for the next 10 days, estrogen is building, 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 and there's this beautiful communication that's going on between your brain and your ovaries, and, and the brain is, is telling the ovaries, make more estrogen, and the ovaries make more estrogen, and they're sending that message back to the brain saying, I made estrogen, and the brain's like, make more estrogen because I got an egg that needs to be released. So this is the conversation that's happening between these two parts of your body. So in order to make sure that that conversation can happen the most efficiently, you're gonna wanna go into some longer fasts, especially where you can try to hit autophagy. Now I've done a lot of videos on autophagy. And what I want you to know is that there are two parts of a woman's body where autophagy really responds uh, nicely and plays very fairly. And that is in the hypothalamus and pituitary and the thecal cells, the outer cells around the ovaries. These parts of our body were built for autophagy, which fascinates me because if you think about it, why did we come designed with special autophagy mechanisms in these parts of our body? Because reproduction for humans is important for us to continue as a species and our bodies know that. So when we throw these autophagy fasts in those first 10 days, autophagy fasting's 10 day, uh, 17 hours or longer, 
we start to stimulate autophagy, we clean that system up and estrogen can shine. So I love that for those of you that are struggling to get pregnant, make sure you're learning to fast a little longer in those, those 10 days. Now, when we hit ovulation, which is, I call it manifestation in my new book, Fast Like a Girl. When we hit ovulation, what I want you to know is that we don't wanna rock the boat too much at that point. That is not the time to throw a three-day water fast at, at, at your body. So if you're like, oh, well, Dr. Mindy said autophagy, estrogen, uh, longer fast go well, I know I'm about to ovulate, I want a baby, then I wanna encourage you to not use those long fasts as your tool when you move into ovulation. Now, if you're not familiar with this, ovulation is somewhere between day 10 and day 15. Everybody's is a little different. What I'm noticing is if you can kind of just clue in, if you really can get into touch with your body, you might actually even feel it in your ovaries when you ovulate. So in that five day window, keep your fast below 17 hours. We don't want to stimulate autophagy then. You, I even recommended keeping it in the new book. I talk about keeping it under 15 hours. This is the time you're trying to create a baby. We don't want to shake the boat too much, but we also don't want to Im increase glucose too much. We don't want to go off into the Western diet with bad oils and sugars too much because that's going to affect not only your ovulation window, but it'll affect the quality of your pregnancy and how you feel and, and it affects the health of your baby. So we don't want that five day window to be junk. We don't want it to be long fasts. So let's keep fasting around 15 hours. Uh, in the new book, I have a bunch of protocols for infertility, so I'm really excited to get those to you. Then you come out of ovulation, day 16 to about day 19, and you can throw some longer fasts at it again. That's great, with one exception. If you went into ovulation and you're actively trying to get pregnant, when you come out of that window, when you come out of day 15, I want you to keep your fast less than 15 hours. I don't want you to throw a three day water fast at that time. Now, some of you might be listening to that and going, wait a second, I thought I was supposed to fast because my hormones went down during that time. Yes, for every other woman, that's amazing. For the woman who's actively trying to get pregnant, let's just assume that you've got a fertilized egg in there, we don't wanna go into longer fasts. We definitely don't wanna throw a three day water fast at that window. So again, I explain this all in the book. So, but for now, I want you to know, coming out of ovulation, let's just keep things chill. Let's not rock the boat. Let's not increase cortisol. If you wanna do a little keto, you can, if that feels good. But if you're like white knuckling keto, stop it. Like let's go into nature's carbs and let's go into a little more of what I preach in the nurture phase. Which takes me to my last phase, which is the nurture phase. This starts to happen where progesterone is building. You need the most specific, like well-balanced amount of progesterone for a fertilized egg to be able to implant on the uterine wall. So when we get too much progesterone, that uterine wall is signaled to, to, to shed and you'll have a period. So we're talking to the woman who's trying to get pregnant. If you're trying to get pregnant, then when you come out of ovulation, you're keeping your fast around 15 hours. You're eating very healthy and maybe a combination of keto and hormone feasting. You're just, I just don't want you raising cortisol. I want you to like nurture the heck out of yourself. And then when we hit day 20, we don't know, are we pregnant, are we not pregnant? We don't know. And so at that point, we wanna just make sure that we're keeping glucose up a little bit, our fasts are lower around day 20, and that we're not stressing ourselves out, we're not pushing a lot of stren a strenuous exercise. So it's once you find the rhythm with this, I promise you, it gets easier and easier. You just gotta find your rhythm. First half of the cycle before ovulation, go to town on fasting. That's gonna improve your fertility. When you get into ovulation, middle level fasting. And when you come out of ovulation, what you're gonna do is you're gonna nurture the heck out of yourself. If 15 hours feels good, do it. If it's a stretch, don't do it. You're gonna lean into some nature's carbs and you're gonna cross your fingers and hope that a baby is on the way. If it doesn't happen, don't go, oh my gosh, 
that video is wrong, I promise you I'm watching this in my own one-on-one -on -one clients. I'm watching this in our Reset Academy. Women who have been not able to get pregnant for years, they do what I call the fasting cycle, which is what I just explained to you. And all of a sudden now they're able to have, uh, you know, to get pregnant. So make sure when you come out of ovulation, you love on yourself. Okay, a lot of nuance some new things there. So if you have gotten pregnant, this is gonna be so fun. I can't wait to come and look at this, the comments here. If you've gotten pregnant, doing the fasting cycle, doing my fasting strategies, please put it in the comments so that all, every other woman on here can, can discover that. But also for my own enjoyment, one of the things that I know when Fast Like a Girl comes out is that it, that book has the potential to, to dramatically impact our infertility rates because between fasting and eating for your cycle, what we know is you balance those sex hormones. And when those sex hormones are balanced, your chances of getting pregnant are much greater. So as always, I hope that helps. Excited to do this video. Can't wait to see your messages and let me know if you pre-ordered Fast Like a Girl. Appreciate you all. So Fast Like a Girl, it's ready for pre-order now. I hope this book changes your life the way the information has changed hundreds of thousands of women that have applied it. From the bottom of my heart, enjoy and let's get healthy together.